Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are maximum. More like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish to hear energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me today is Stuart the News Guy. Who is... Do I get new? Do, do I get money? Do I get? Uh, do I get music now? Anyone? Mm. Anyone? No. Oh. And Scarecrow, the not listening guy. Hey, I'm <laughs> listening. <laughs> so anyway, tonight since it's Australia Day and since we're all Aussies, I figured we would do an Australia Day special focusing specifically on Australian-made sci-fi. Now it doesn't have to necessarily be sort of aired first in Australia, as long as it was made down here, it's perfectly acceptable. But first, we have the news, since we've been cramming it into the end of the show and had to skip a few articles in order to get it in time. I'm putting it first, so do it the news guy. Go. Alright, first piece of news. Sir Patrick Stewart said he will play Captain Jean-Luc Picard on one condition. It's not part of the reboot? No. <laughs> that is for, that is for all the reboot haters. No, um, if if that um, he was actually um, he said if it was a really good script, that he would actually re uh, reprise um Jean Luc. And if someone said if he, uh, he actually um, someone asked him if he, if someone did a reboot, who would he would want to play as Jean Luc? He said his son. That works. Daniel Daniel Stewart. All we've got to do is Keep... tie him down and shave him bald. Problem solved. Well, actually, Daniel actually p- appeared in Next Generation. That's right, he did too. In um, Inner Light. Yeah. So, yes, he's already he's already been he's already been involved in that. Nice. Moving along. Now, this is just a rumor, by the way, that Visceral Games may be developing a standalone Han Solo Star Wars game. Yeah. This I, is just a rumor. Yeah, which which means that if it's a Star Wars game, it's probably going to be handheld or a movie tie-in, which means it's going to be either Bad. a handheld or a movie tie-in game. We both we all know what that means. <laughs> Bad. Yeah, because unfortunately, they. the movie tie-in games have been really, really horrible. When? But I thought they? I, <laughs> the only one that I actually really liked that actually had to. Do with style that actually had to do with the movies was um Shadows of the Empire on the Nintendo 64 because it was actually really well done. Yeah, I thought I'm I'll playing that on the 64. That one later. I played Pod Racer on the 64 and I played the, one of the X-wing ones on the 64. Yeah, Rogue Squadron was well. That's the one. Yeah, that was yeah. that was pretty good. Rogue Squadron was good. I liked. Yeah, they did using the, the cheats all... in Pod Racer and making <laughs> the pods go infinite fast and that was always hilarious. Like breaking the maps by flying through a wall because you hit it too fast. That was always fun. Alright, moving along and actually talking about proper science for once. Stephen War- Stephen Hawking, I almost said that wrong. Wow. Stephen Hawking is working on a new theory of everything. In a Facebook post, the, and I'm going to quote the website for this, the wheelchair riding British um, physicist I can't believe they call them wheelchair riding. Are you, you think they could do some, something a little bit better with that? Hello, so that Amy. He's working, hi, Amy. <laughs> says that he is working on a theory of cosmic origins that he claims would be bigger than the Higgs boson. Or boson. I boson. always say that wrong. Thank you. The Higgs boson, which is cool in its own right. Yes, anyway, go. Yes. You've got two minutes left. Go. Oh, okay. Uh, Andy Serkis, uh, reportedly confirmed as Ulysses Claw in Avengers Age of Ultron. For those who don't know who Ulysses Claw is, that is Black Panther. But we already have a Black Panther. Yeah. Well, no, he was the villain to Black Panther. So yeah, the villain to Black Panther, I was about to say. Yes, sorry. I had to get that. 
That, so, that, if that's the case, then it's probably... He's either going to be near the end of the movie, or he's going to be at the beginning of the movie when they... Because um, isn't Black Panther in this thing as well? Uh, there I, are I, rumors I know he's about, got his own movie. Yeah, there are rumors about um, that the girl in the cave part could actually be Black Panther's sister, and the cave could be full of vibranium. So... That'd be pretty that cool. Could be a reason, that could be a way could, to bring him in. Nice. And right. Amy's gone again. Bye bye, Amy. Uh, bye, Amy. <laughs> Alright. So, uh, on to some Terminator Genesis news. <laughs> I'm sorry, I really don't like this. <laughs> uh, they ref uh, a close source to the production of Terminator Genesis has revealed that the crew who work on the movie refer to Arnie's old Terminator character as The Guardian. Hmm. It's an so, interesting concept. Well, it, it makes sense for what I think the story is about. Yeah. Because from what I remember and what I've seen of it, is that I believe that Sarah Jane was actually raised by old Arnie uh, Terminator, so it makes sense of him being a Guardian. Yeah. You know, there, there was also rumours going around who was going to be called the Watchman, so the Guardian and the Watchman, close enough. Yeah. So, uh, moving along, and this is something I really, really love. Red Dwarf Season 11 confirmed filming date! Thank oh, you. finally! Woo! Yes! More Red Dwarf! Because that's what the, the world needs. No more yeah, Stargate, it... more Red Dwarf. Oh, I'll take that. Yeah, hey, I'll take that trade. Pretty, it pretty much is the best sci-fi spoof in, the, in existence right now. So. As oh, long as it's so better than Red good. Dwarf X. Well, it's actually been a year uh, and a half since the Red Dwarf X. Yeah. So they so the scheduled shooting was got underway back in October last year, and it was to be viewed on Dave. I don't know if that's a British. Dave is a site. British TV channel named after Lister from Red oh, Dwarf, and it okay. shows sh it shows shows like Top Gear and effectively any show that you think Lister would watch is guaranteed to be on there. And it, oh, in cool. other words. It's the British version of Seven Mate. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, it's actually right, got it good was... shows. Well, mostly. Yes. So mostly. So uh, it will it's be the British version of Seven day... Mate when Seven Mate started. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's a better way of looking at it. So it will be aired on Dave in autumn this year. So. Like their autumn. I'm guessing this is their autumn. Which... Yeah. So that'll be oh. our spring. So spring. Yes. Yeah. So it's probably September, October-ish is October. the normal yes. sort of time of year for that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, BBC. Now, this is a really cool story that's come out. We, um, uh, Brian Singer has uh, announced on Twitter, by the way, not on any other, not on any, like, going to any new things, on Twitter, the new Storm, Jean, Jean Grey, and Cyclops. Since Apocalypse is all going to be all the young people, can't really use the same guys again. Yeah, they've recast them as younger actors, which they actually yes. look the part, relatively speaking. So yes, well, definitely some of them. Uh, so Alex Alexander Ship is uh, uh sorry Alexandra Ship. I always get that wrong. Why do I get that wrong? I, I don't know, Donovan. Going... It's, it's, it's it's your fault, Donovan. You're not. You're fired. <laughs> is uh is our new storm? She and she actually looks like a, a young Halle Berry, which is really cool. Yes, I actually said that wrong intentionally, just in case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Sophie. Uh, you know, I'm not even gonna use her real name. I'm just gonna say it like this: Sansa Stark is Jean Grey. <laughs> <laughs> there, I said it. No, this is actually really cool. I love. I actually really like Sophie Turner. I actually think she'll do a really good um Jean Grey. As yeah. long as we also see Phoenix involved as well somehow. Yeah, I, I, that's the thing. I don't think we'll see Phoenix involved simply because I think they want to say because they did the reboot and they effectively removed Phoenix from the story, so to speak. I think they're probably going to want to play with that one later. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, did, did we have you mentioned yet that um, uh, on other news to do with X Men Apocalypse? Have you mentioned that, or did we mention that last week? I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember which one was that now. Um, Somebody saw it come through. Fucking... I count. Xavier and Magneto oldies won't be in it. Oh yeah, yeah I already mentioned that. Um, they won't be there because yeah. they're using Michael Fassbender and James McAvoy. 
Yeah, so. And Jennifer Lawrence, because you'll be Mystique as well. Yeah. And uh, just to title, uh, just to end all things, uh, Ty Sheridan is the new Cyclops. Little cool thing with um with um Alexandra and Ty is that they're actually relative newcomers to acting, so this is their first big gig. Obviously, uh, Sophie Turner is really popular because of Game of Thrones. Yeah, which is sort of sort of good. And I like I do like movies that use sort of the unnamed talent, like the original Stargate movie used a lot of. Um, people that were sort of relatively unknown at the time. Um, new, new Star Wars is using new, uh, yeah. new people. I was, I was about to say Star Wars. The, the first Star Wars movie was the same with the exception of one. Yes. Now yeah. this is cool. Babylon 5 cr- uh, creator has a new show. So yes. Dave, the keep crea- on the time. What? You do realise we've now been doing the news for over ten minutes. Yes, yes, I've, I've been saying, go faster. Okay. You've been booted so, yes, back yes. to the end of the show if you don't go faster. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, I'm going to say his last name wrong. Michael Straczynski? I yes, think that's go with that. Right? That's good enough. Go, go, go. Uh, he's got a, a new show on Spike TV. Don't know why he wants Spike. But they're, uh, he's, they're going to be doing our Red Mars adaptation. So, yes, that's going to be good. <laughs> the Marvel Universe is ending! And so are my eardrums! Know. So yes, Marvel Universe is ending. Uh, there is a new comic uh, uh, series coming out called The Secret Wars, which will represent the end of both the Marvel Universe and the Ultimate Marvel Universe, so like Ultimate Spider-Man, stuff like that. So they're going to sort of smack and bang, smack bang into one. They're going to put them on Battle World. And at the end of that, they're doing effectively a full reset back to nothing. And they're rebuilding yep. their entire universe from scratch. And they're going to try and tie it into the movie universe based on what I've heard. So yeah. that's going to be good. Basically, tr- basically it's kind of like Marvel's version of the new 52 comics that DC did. Yeah. So. Right. Last but not least... probably expect Marvel to do it. Whoa. You said last but not least Scarecrow. last time. Scarecrow, you just went absolute full distort. Yeah, I figured as much. Oh, you're back so, to fine. <laughs> yes. And last bit of news. Star Wars <coughs> Father has, right, has been right under our noses all along. Yeah, that one is speculation and I'm not buying it. Yes, this it. is pure speculation, by the way. But uh, yeah. apparently people uh, think that the Collector may, is going to be uh, uh, Peter Quill's father. So, only, this will be interesting. The only downside I see to that is that he probably would have known when he first met Peter. And they would have gone... Would have had the whole daddy-son type scene. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, right. on to the main event. Your news is over. Shush. Shush, shush, shush. Your news is over. No more news. We are done. Yeah, we're done. Anyway, moving on to the main event. Aussie made sci-fi. I would like to welcome Oz Twilighter to the chat room. Um, if feel free to comment in the Hi, chat room, honey! and we'll more than happily answer any questions Hi, you sweetie. have. That's my girlfriend. And if you're Stuart's girlfriend, I suggest you run away. <laughs> Oi! Really, Rapidly. Really, wow. really fast. <laughs> I'm going to stare at us if you want a rapid evac. I can send it your way. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Ouch. Anyway. Yeah. I'm not bringing her back on the podcast anymore. <laughs> hey, we do the same to Amy. Anyway, um, as we do it at anime night, that's beside the point. Um, anyway, main event. Australian made sci fi. <sighs> wow. It's, it's a list. It's a big list. Well, I think we should start list. with dishonorable mentions. <laughs> as much as it pains me. I have to give a dishonorable mention shout out to what I'm reluctant to call a sci fi. And I mean really reluctant. It's, it's, it's sci fi in the most loosest definition of sci fi. Like, it's just. Yeah, it's, it's. Again, why it's in the dishonorable mention point. Yeah. Um, I believe we are saying. Hi to Mr. Squiggle. Yes. Some... And may it never be mentioned again. And may it never be mentioned again. Also <laughs> on the dishonorable, dishonorable mention list, and 
is Power Rangers the movie. Hey! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Which movie? The All first the one. The, the, the first one. It was actually made in Australia. Yes. So, yes. It was oh, hey, exactly the entire done. first Power Rangers series was made in Australia. How was Springs to be specific? Uh, I just wanted to absolutely annoy Stuart again, just because yeah. I could. And I was, I was wondering... I was, Honestly, surprised Scarecrow didn't bite the bait either. <laughs> hey, even I'll admit the original Power Ranger movie was slightly dodgy and no sense of continuity. Uh, so and that's saying something. Because we're talking about Power Rangers. <laughs> there is no sense of continuity anyway. No. Con. Ten, con. Eh? Yes, anyway. Do we have any other dishonorable mentions or are we moving on to the ones we actually like? Can I put the last Naruto of the movie on because of the entire No. Space? Okay. <laughs> Just the, the moon battle. No. Uh, it's, Stuart, it's a fantasy. Not only that, it's not Australian. That's a fair point. Sure. Uh, if it wasn't, else. if we weren't doing the Australian special, I probably would have allowed it. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Amy. Um, hey, beautiful. And, yeah. Um, you, you, you should run away from Dave really, really fast. Like you can. No one to blame you. Anyway, um, okay, on to the, 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 the main shows on the list. I think probably the number one Australian-made sci-fi, bar nothing, only because it's made it into the sort of the pantheon of sci-fi greats, Farscape. Yes, everybody rags on the puppets. <laughs> so, man, it's dodgy as. But Hey, don't, don't rag on Sparky. He was actually useful <laughs> in a comic sense, but he was useful. Yeah, he was. Um, and pilot was pretty cool. Best pilot ever. Ever. Yeah. Um, so, and then we've got, uh, actually, I, to be honest, that I reckon it'd be a close fight between pilot and, um, crap, I've forgotten his name, Alan from Firefly. Um, Leaf on a Breeze. No, nope, Wash. Not, wash, that's it, Wash. God damn, I'm retarded tonight. Slightly more than normal. Anyway. <laughs> like that's hard to achieve. <laughs> um, so, the... See, Firefly... Wa- uh, sorry. Duh. Wow. Wow, my brain is just not in the right place. Farscape. Um, I, th- I think it deserved a better run than it got. And I think it, it sort of fell... When it was made, it fell sort of right at the end of... Um, almost the silver age of sci-fi, right when sort of, because sort of Star Trek was almost the original golden age of sci-fi, well, so to speak, um, and ushered in quite a few sci-fi series. Then there was a bit of a pause around the time at the end of Star Trek when sort of Babylon Five came along and that sort of thing. And then there was a bit of a gap, and then there was sort of Stargate, which sort of ushered in the next era. And then when Stargate ended, there was a massive void, and now we're starting to finally see. The, another era of sci-fi starting back up again, which is good. I'm looking forward to it. But Farscape was really good in its own rights. Once you sort of strip it away, it's a pilot dro- flying the most unaerodynamic shuttle-looking thing. Gets Actually, whipped. the uh, the Farscape project ship was aerodynamic as sin. Yeah. It, it, they did it was. With, the, with the Farscape project. It's... It looked it looked very similar to the next gen shuttles that NASA were going to start developing around the time. That's what they based it on. So, yeah. Mm. But yeah, so, and it, hats off to them for getting the design right at that point in time. Yeah, and it gets whipped through a wormhole thing to the middle of nowhere, and happens to come across a prison transport. Gets. Um. Mac gets sort of ta- the the pilot gets taken on board and then they disappear off into the distance, um, and it's it's done really well. Like we learn all sorts of cool things. Like there's hundreds of alien races all out there, and yeah, I don't know what else is there to say about Farscape beyond it's awesome. And okay, I'll start nitpicking. Oh yay, nitpicking! Yay. First couple of seasons were fantastic. Kreis was one hell of a bad guy. He was predictable at times, he was unpredictable at others. Yeah. 
I started to lose interest though when Kreis got replaced by Scorpius. Oh, don't diss the Scorpy. Scorpy in. Oh god, I can't even remember his. I'm having a brain fart now. I can't even remember the main guy's character name. Scorpius. No. NASA boy. Oh, John, oh, John Crichton. Crichton. Right. When Scorpy was in Crichton's head, that was. Yeah, that was a little well bit well done. Shuck. That was that was yeah. <laughs> because that brought a nice um. Dicto- nice sort of. Um, inside. I, yeah, it developed John like crazy. Yeah, it's something other than the lovesick um, puppy, puppy of Aaron. Yeah, but just actual Scorpius as a bad guy. Yeah. In all honesty, he was he was more predictable than Palpatine. Yeah, that's a fair point. He was fairly ge- sort of generic bad guy. That said... I mean, I've seen Power Ranger bad guys that were more unpredictable. Shout out to Scorpius. He's the captain on the ultimate enemy sci-fi ship on Save Sci-Fi. Meh. <laughs> well, we've, got, we've got a few people on the on there who have, need their heads checked, but we already knew that. We're part of the group. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and then um, it, I, other, th- other things <sighs> that got under my skin. Chiana. Yeah. Uh. I was wondering when this was going to come up. Yeah. Of all the did characters anyone, they could have come up with, they came up with Chiana. Did anyone what? like Chiana? I honestly don't know. If you have to go with an alien female character of some sort, why couldn't they have stolen Trans Gemini from Andromeda? Because reasons. That was a, would have been better than Chiana. Uh, 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 At least she has her moments of badassness and lovableness. Chiana just... Why is she still on the ship and why hasn't she been thrown, thrown out the nearest airlock yet? <laughs> because she was hooking up with Tentacle Beard. Dargo? Dargo. Dargo was pretty damn cool until he started trying to get into her pants. Yeah. I would I would love to see Dargo fight Ronan. Oh. That would be brutal. That would be brutal. Dargo love- fighting Ronan would be brutal, and then I can somehow see Teal walking up behind them, zanning them both, and going, "You idiots!" And and Worf is just sort of sitting to the side, going, "Oh come on, I was burning all that." <laughs> At which point, so Worf's betting on it. Well, another appropriate, yeah. Count Dooku, Dooku walks in. Oh, here we go with a bowl of popcorn <laughs> because to reasons share with Worf. Because reasons, yeah. Damn straight. <laughs> anyway, would want rings about people. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, but back on topic. Back Can on we? Topic. We'll stay on topic for at least a minute. What was your favourite part in Farscape? If you could chop Farscape down to, say, one or two episodes or one or two moments, what would they be? Oh, jeez, I don't remember much about Farscape. <laughs> um, can I just choose a weapon? You're going to go with the the blade, aren't you? Yeah. The, 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 <laughs> the Colter blade. Colter come on, blade. How, 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 come on, it's a broadsword that turns into a rifle. Like, really? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I'd love it. Mind you, did you notice they actually used, um, like, silly things that were done in Farscape? One of the silliest that I remember is water pistols. Yeah. They used water pistols as space guns by spray painting them black. I know that was <laughs> Super Soaker made a killing with that. <laughs> oh, they so uh... did. So anyway, d- um, Scarecrow, what was your favourite part of Farscape based on what you remember? In all honesty, my favourite part was in the first episode. Really? Yeah. When they shoot Crichton into the. On that slingshot ball. around the planet in the little Farscape module, and yeah, that was pretty cool. inadvertently goes into the wormhole, into the wormhole, and is pinballing around inside like no tomorrow. That was pretty cool. So my favourite part actually comes from the exact opposite end of the story than that. It's the speech with the wormhole weapon, and that to me is probably still one of the best moments of sci-fi. Is watching these two enemy forces that are just 
powerful beyond belief, brought to their knees after getting exactly what they asked for. That, to me, was was brilliant. Agreed. So, so how about we talk about some lesser-known Australian sci-fi series? Well... Or do we want to keep going on, harping on about Fastgate? Because I'm more than happy to do that. <laughs> let's mix it up. All right, mix it up a little. All right. Terra... Yeah, probably... uh, I've got one that wasn't on the list that I only just thought of. Terra Nova? Terra Nova. Oh, God. I like Terra Nova. I've actually got Battle Gear from Terra Nova under my bed right now because I want okay, to make now, a short film and it never happened. Is cool. the, yeah, I really the weapons cool. Yeah, I The weapons were Nerf guns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's just that, yeah, but that's just basic cosplay. That's not most guns are cosplay. It's just that's, Nerf guns. But that's almost the standard trope in Australian filmmaking. We need a space gun. Quick to Toy World. <laughs> <laughs> no, Toys R Us have got a better range of Nerf guns. Yes, Toys R Us for sure. <laughs> Besides, I remember looking at one of the guns from Terra Nova, the rocket launcher, and I went, the fuck? So that's what happened to that last AS, ti- AS-1 Titan Unity power system I was trying to buy. You <laughs> 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 bastard stole it. it. Uh, um, another show which a lot of Aussies watched when they were, when they were young, it aired... About 12, almost, it would be about 10 years ago now, 10, 15 years ago it aired, uh, was Silver Sun. And that was a sci-fi series set on a, sh- um, a colonial ship, similar looking almost to the Daedalus from Stargate, yeah. um, as they travelled from Earth to the Silver Sun, which was an un-sort of disclosed location um, planet, so they could get away from Earth, which has been annihilated and colonize this new world and start again and it sort of tells the story of the teenage crew as they sort of go from A to B and while it wasn't the best sci-fi around it had its good moments it had its moments the third son uh, I actually uh, I actually grew up watching this and it was actually one of my favorite um, shows growing up because I actually really got into it and I kind of had a crush on, on, on some of the characters yeah, oh, of did, course you did. Do you know the chick that went on to be on Neighbours? Um, with the, oh, the, which, the, the puffy uh, hair? Curly uh, puffy uh, hair? I don't remember which one that is now. Yeah, I can't remember either. Can't remember her name. But yeah, I had a bit, bit of a thing for her when I was when I was substantially younger than I am now. No, it was, third, um... Third Rock from the Sun? Just... Was that Australian? I don't think... I, no, I, it wasn't. I don't think that's Australian, Amy. We're doing Australian-only sci-fi. Oh, Amy, please. Yeah, I'm assuming that's a show you grew up with and watched when you were growing up, because it's on about the same time, actually, as Third Rock from the Sun. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, so, okay, I'll, I'll pass the, the torch to Scarecrow. He's the one that has the full list, so I'll let him go nuts. I've mentioned the three shows that I wanted to mention. Originally it was two shows, but that's beside the point. Um, All right. Well, we, if we're going to stay with the stuff we saw when we were young... I didn't get to watch many episodes of this due to the time that it was being shown, but I have somewhat fond memories of a show called Spellbinder. Now, it was partially Australian and partially Polish, so it's not true Australian sci-fi, but it was very sci-fi-ish of an average Aussie bloke, or Aussie kid, who managed to... T- gets His house gets invaded by some weird crazy woman. The next thing you know he's, when, he's managed to get himself, himself sucked into this complete magical world where people can use this thing called a spell, the spell stone. And basically he creates a technological version of it and can use the power himself and uses that to get home. That's pretty cool. Uh, another show which is more traditional sci-fi, which I didn't actually get to see until a couple of years ago. It is rare as hell, so if you can track it down, please do and enjoy. It's called Space Above and Beyond. Yes, I I watched the first couple episodes of that this week between um, in preparation for this. Now, the first three or four episodes were actually filmed on an Australian Air Force base. Ah, I heard about that. I um, I was a kid when I heard about it, so I didn't really believe it, but it's really cool that um, something... You can actually a... see it in the first couple of episodes. 
Yeah. Because as the uh, recruits are training, they are dealing with their initial flight training and everything else. And what happens? They taxi out past two rows of FA-18s parked in Australian-style yeah. hangars. Yes, and they also um they also use hammerheads. Well, they're pilots of yeah. hammerheads. The, the hammerheads are their sh are their planes, but the hammerheads taxi out past uh, the, Australian um, F-18s on this airbase. Which is it's hilarious. pretty goddamn sweet, and I quite enjoyed it. It's a good series, but sadly, after the first three episodes, the Americans went, "Ah, oh, this is doing well now. We'll take this back," and, we'll and shifted it all back to Hollywood. And then it just got put in a bad time slot and died at the end of the first season on a literal cliffhanger where the, the guys you've watched, fallen in love with and gone through training with, are falling in the atmosphere of in a pretty much a cargo pod that's been shot down. That's where it leaves off and there is nothing else in the, in the universe. Well, that sucks. I'm, I'm I'm going through a list, and I found something that I actually remember watching, and oh. I completely forgot about it. Uh, yeah. Parallax. Parallax. That sounds familiar. It was a it was um it was an Australian t uh, TV show. It was filmed in Western Australia. Yes, Perth. <laughs> <laughs> I have it up, so I'm cheating. <laughs> um, it, so what this story was. Is that um? Is that uh? These kids, uh, their parents were split, but not knowing, but and they were split in um, uh, not altered dimensions. So, well, actually, yeah, I guess it's say alt alternate dimensions. But the mother um was sort of like a a, a um alien uh, fight against fought against these um alien sort of things. And that they used um, different portals or um, parallaxes, as they called, to travel. Is that was... is that the one where um, whenever they travelled, you sort of see it zoom out from one world and flick across a couple of Talk times to, to another next. world yeah. and zoom back in? I yes. remember that. And the kids are uh, um, uh, then find the, uh, uh, the like the ultimate command room because they're trying to find their mum who got kidnapped by the evil aunt, which I find hilarious. Uh. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, it's called the reading room. Oh, that's been while, a while since I watched since I watched Parallax. Well, like, wow. it came out the same year as us as uh, Silver Sun. Yeah, I know, but Silver Sun was definitely more popular, and it annoyed me that Silver Sun was left on a bit of a cliffhanger as well. Yeah, Last it thing seems to be a common situation for Australian sci-fi. They get abandoned. Yeah. Mm. Well, I think that's more of a sci-fi slash TV show in general type thing, because very few shows get the notice that they're going to be cancelled before they've actually made the last few no we are not talking about Captain Planet Amy you have zero chance that doesn't <laughs> even make it on the dishonorable mentions list that's how bad it is um <laughs> fair so yeah I completely forgot about Parallax this is actually one of my favourite ones another one that I watched a few episodes but never got really into it um Cyber Girl that sounds familiar. Um, it was it, it was shown on Network Ten yeah. and ABC. Around it was like a kids show. Uh, what it was, she was a um, human prototype that could li literally had um, superhuman strength, speed, and ability to to uh, interact with any electronic device. So it's sort of like we have the technology, we can rebuild her. Kinda, but um, th there's um other uh. There's like a, another cyber uh, woman and man because they're more grown up, trying to find her because she's still run away and rogue. Yeah. But yeah, another little one that was uh, hidden. Sweet. So. Uh, That's my research done for the evening. Yeah. Well, I'm just sort of sitting here and thinking, thinking back on all the shows we've listed, like sci-fi shows like Silver Sun, like like. Silver Sun to me deserves something made. Like, like it's, just too, it's, it's too late to do it now. Like a like a, a, a movie, director TV type movie huh. that has sort of finished the story. And I actually 
back when I first watched this and I was still in high school, I actually wrote a short sort of ending for it, which was the crew all go into hibernation because they can't sort of... There's not enough of them to sort of man the ship. The ship's too heavily damaged, so they can't really do anything. So they continue broadcasting a distress beacon and they go to sleep. Um, about 10 or 12 years later, which is roughly now, uh, the another ship arrives... And it turns out that this ship is far more advanced than the original J-Class, which is what the original ships were. Oh, and they did an episode uh, yeah. roughly along those lines, actually. No, what they did was they did one where the one... There was another silver... Yeah, uh, it was... Another Star Runner. Yeah, another J-Class came through a wormhole but was totaled. And at the end of the second series, that J-Class went back through the wormhole with half the crew on board, still on board and, and, dis- it, and disappeared. Yeah, and then... Was, and that's how they ended it. Yeah. And so my ending picks up effectively from there, where a, oh, cool. a new class of ship appears. Human-made, more advanced, has actual FTL capabilities. Like, proper FTL, FTL. capabilities. Arrives, um, collects the crew, and then um, travels through the wormhole to the other side, finds the other ship eventually, because it's ten years on and this thing's been neandering around on the other side for ten years. Um, eventually finds them, fights off nondescript bad guy number 43, goes back through the wormhole and makes its way back to the, um, to the Silver Sun, where the colony is already built. Uh, so, yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing, like, a reboot, or, um, or maybe a, uh, a reboot would a, be cool. Or a version of, of, um, of their like grown up and they're adults now, and then they have to um, start bringing out um, more of the um, the cryogen genic, uh, the cryogen crew. Yeah, I think uh, that'd be a little interesting twist. But yeah, and, and, and for a kid show, it actually had quite a bit of sort of sci-fi in it. It wasn't sort of soft sci-fi. It actually had some decent sort of yeah, sort of deep sci-fi. Got, in it. it got pretty dark as well, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it did. Like there was there was a huge human rights thing when uh, for the clone, they had a yes. clone on board which helped. The captain, when the captain got sick from some alien thing that he yeah, found yes, on the hull, right. and um, there was a one point, and this one was actually total crap, but whatever. There was a pulsar emitting the exact frequency of someone's brain waves, oh, which that was... resulted. Oh, that's, good. that's right, because that chick um, had cybernetic implants. Yeah, and it was emitting the same frequency as the implants, cancelling the implants out, and so they used all of the different deflected things to blow up the neutron star because reasons yeah. it did have for a, for a kids show aimed at sort of the 10, 12 15 year old bracket that's where it was targeted it actually had a lot of really cool sort of stuff in it yeah it was the again too- Australian sci-fi once more suffers from budgetitis yeah they did, just, pretty, they did pretty good for their budget. The ship, oh. the, the, considering it's a kid's show, the CG was all right for the time. Once you factor in it was a kid's show. Um, Ocean Girl, Amy says. Ocean oh, yes, Girl, I remember yeah. Ocean Girl. It had the head of the pyramid, but I think that was less sci-fi, more fantasy, if I remember correctly. Yeah. It, also oh, had a, it also had elements of sci-fi, yeah. and it borrowed pretty heavily, if I remember correctly, from um, Sequest. Yes, it did. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So was... Ocean Girl was actually done by the same uh, people who made um, uh, Cyber Girl. So yeah, actually, I remember Ocean Girl. It was like a pyramid underwater, and she could swim down to it. And there was yeah things and stuff inside the pyramid that did stuff. But I, it's better I can remember. I also remember that she was hot, but that's the guy <laughs> thing. <laughs> Again, that would count as a typical male comment if yeah. it wasn't yes. so damn true. <laughs> Uh, see like, again teenage male watching a show like that we're not watching it for the story <laughs> no well... when I got the chance to watch it I did watch it for all of it but yeah anyway it... not the point what else, what other things can we think of but I still think Farscape's probably the biggest of the lot yeah yeah Farscape I don't think we'll get anything as big as what Farscape was yeah. and um she was an alien yeah she was that's right I totally forgot that the, the Ocean Girl chick was an alien. Um, didn't they find more of her? And yeah, but they weren't people. anywhere near as stable, yeah. shall we say? Yeah, they were definitely crazy. So, 
Uh, speaking of uh, Farscape again, I've actually got my Blu-ray set sitting here next to me. Sorry, DVD set. Or is it a Blu-ray set? Uh, no, it's a DVD set. It's a big-ass frilling box. Um, speaking of Farscape frilling, not the point. <laughs> I, I, I swear I did that 100% unintentionally. Um, what's a f- I'm trying to think of what a name was. The blue medical chick. I'll get to the thing in a minute. There we go. Her name was... It doesn't say. Yay! <laughs> doesn't say her name. Yay! How useful are you? I'll go on Wikipedia. Actually, that's no, probably less useful. Yeah, it's probably less useful. So just be known as Blue Person. Zahn! That's her. She came to Supernova. The person who played that last year. Oh. Um, well, she did too. And she, know, uh, she um, took one GG's look at... Yeah, she she'd never seen a book like this one, and she she didn't just sign this thing. She did a massive, she effectively coloured half the page. It was it's really funny to look at. It's, uh... it's actually funny on um the science 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 fiction tele- television Wikipedia page actually mentions Mister Squiggle. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's I, I, when I was it's looking confirmed. at it doing this episode. I saw that I was like, I don't even. Confirmed on Wikipedia, Mister Squiggle is sci-fi, yeah. which says more about Wikipedia than Mister Squiggle. <laughs> <laughs> Wikipedia, good for some things. What the hell am I reading? <laughs> yeah, only you can answer that. <laughs> Do you mind if I actually go into the Power Rangers movie? I know it's dishonorable, but yeah. I know I know. It's only about. did that to annoy you. Feel free to go <laughs> ahead. So yeah, uh, uh, for those. <laughs> again, I, I say again. Which Power Ranger movie? I know of three of them. Uh, the original That's... one in 1994 when they when they did the alternate versions when they got the the um Ninjetti powers when they had to Ninja I, powers. Yeah. Ninjetti was the movie variant. There's that's that's like three well, way. To, called... There's three Power Rangers movies is at least four too many. Yeah. Now there was but original no, uh, Power Rangers, there was a Turbo movie, and then there was a Power Rangers in Space movie. And they get progressively worse, so the one that is being talked about right now is actually the highlight of them. Yes. So back in 1994, uh, Saban actually flew the cast down, and they made the Power Rangers movie in Sydney. So all the scenes, like the skydiving was done here in Australia. Uh, the scene at the very end w- with the fireworks was actually over at Luna Park. Uh, and, uh Luna Park, you poor, poor place. <laughs> yeah, uh, the only reason I actually remembered this one, is that I remember this was here, is that when Steve Cardenas came to Supernova a few years ago, he actually mentioned it. Yeah. Unless I would not have known without doing research, then I did some research into it. But yeah. Research um, is hard. You think? Now, um, so the plot plot line for this, uh, for the movie, was uh, that Ivan Ooze, uh, was freed. Yeah, they they sort of did a similar thing with with, with Rita. He was freed in a he was in a prison under a construction site on Earth. They accidentally released him. Uh, he kind of was. <laughs> this is where it gets funny. That he ins- he doesn't enslave the kids. He enslaves all the adults. So all the children are left without parents. <laughs> you would think, as a child, if your parents are gone to run amok, no, they just try to get them back. So the parent is actually uh, he actually goes and attacks Zorda and the, the command center because big bad villain Zordon go way 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 back. Uh, Zordon seems to have more enemies than um. Zordon seems to have more enemies than the Doctor. Yeah, Zordon seems to have more enemies than this girl I know in the Brisbane cosplay scene has ex-boyfriends. Ooh. Yeah, leaving Zordon... that alone. <laughs> Zordon has more enemies than Tony Abbott. Uh, Actually, no, that's not true. <laughs> about to say, anyway. that's, that's a hard call, but we're leaving that alone, moving so, right along. Yeah, moving back to it. Uh, basically, the Rangers lose their powers, they get teleported... Uh, I can't remember what the plant's called. They get teleported off world to some mysterious planet. Planet Bob. Have... No, it's not Bob. Yes, it is. It's called Planet Bob from now on, <laughs> damn it. Uh, basically, they get new powers, they come back, fight, I've... fight I've been in this big battle, yada yada yada. They win the end. 
Is that it? Wow. Even I can't remember the damn planet. No, I'm going to look it up just so I can find it for myself, just for, just for personal reasons. It'd be highly amusing if it was called Planet Bob, just saying. It's not, I know that much. <laughs> Planet Bob from now on, because I, I said. Power Rangers movie, plot, uh, Here's a question for you. Do you guys know any Aussie... Uh, yeah, Amy's like, it's not. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, planet is uh, Phaedos. That's it. Now you run and have to go on a mystical journey and wind up fighting uh, dinosaur skeletons without powers. <laughs> yes. That's not bizarre at all. Anyway, back to your question, Dave. I don't know what my question was. I, I don't... Are you starting... You're asking, do you know any Aussie... And then you went blank. Yeah, I was going to say um, actors that are... And actresses that do a lot of sci-fi. That's the problem. There really aren't any. No. Dino <laughs> Riders. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, the oh. memories. Oh, man. That, that, brings back some, that brings back some memories. Talk about mentally scarring. Yes. Ah, uh, Aussie actors have done sci-fi. Um, There's been a few, but not major roles. No. I guess the other one really that we can say is is, is Gigi. Yeah. Maybe then we still grow at it. <laughs> yeah, I still think she wasn't that bad. There have been substantially worse characters on sci-fi. Actually, how about that? S- spot list. Top three annoying characters from sci-fi. Does it have to be Australian sci-fi? No, screw it. Open in the door Number to everyone. Number one, Jar Jar Binks. I would have to disagree. That was too easy. I would disagree. It's not Jar Jar Binks. He's not the most annoying. Well, he's at least in there. Oh, he's top three. Oh, I'm not disagreeing. I would, based on hate from the fans, I would have to say Wesley Crusher. <laughs> or Wes. <laughs> Poor Will Wheaton. Yeah. No, still no, hate no, him no, this day. Nothing against Will Wheaton. I love him. He's awesome. Oh yeah. But people, I feel sorry for Wes Crusher though. People just don't like Wes. I don't understand. <laughs> I never got it either. So, Poor and, guy, he, has, he has worse luck than Ripshirt Turk. Kirk. <laughs> Kirk at least gets the girl. Speaking of Ripshirt Kirk, what was? Oh the... yes, we need to talk about that. Oh god. What so any, anyway, anyway. Number th- number three on my list. We'll get back to Ripshirt Kurt in like three seconds. Um, number three would be Kavanaugh from Stargate Atlantis. Yeah, he I was just annoying from start to finish. Like it, as a character, he was fine, but he was just annoying. Then Jar Jar Binks as a character, he was no one likes Jar Jar. Comic relief. That's about it. And Wesley was annoying as Dix. That said. Personally, I don't mind him as a character. I just know that online, for the two major sci-fi, Star Wars and Star Trek, the two most hated characters, unchallengeable, are Jar Jar and Wesley. And yeah. Wesley, based on the hate that I've seen, goes above Jar Jar. Just. Yeah, it wouldn't be much. Yeah. And I can't understand why, because he was a good character. Yeah. He was... It was awesome. I, I guess no one really liked him back then. I, I think the main reason no one really liked him is because they're jealous... They were just jealous. They were jealous of the pretty boy. Yeah. Um, anyway. Um, they were, all he had going for... He wasn't even that pretty at, at the time. All he had going for him was the fact he was a bloody genius. Exactly. And an annoying... That boy dug himself out of bloody... Uh, dug the Enterprise D out of so many... Different issues, yeah. Issues just by applying the rarest thinking that you've ever seen in a Star Trek. He actually applied logic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, there's no eject the warp core. It's like, why don't we try this? Look, I've got a handheld thingy that does the whatsy that we need to thing. Just because I got bored. Yeah. And uh, my, anyway. my mum's the doctor, so I've got unlimited access to the replicator. Go figure. <laughs> Rip shirt, Kirk. Stuart, I'll leave the rest of the story with you. Uh, so yeah, uh, just before we went on the podcast, a picture came up. I'm just going to quickly find it. 
and I had a really funny stat on it. Here it is. Page. I sort of, I sort of ambushed him with this. I told him we oh, weren't yeah. really going right, to talk so about yeah. it. This is a really, really funny Star Trek stat. <laughs> if Kirk meets a woman on a mission, the Red Shirts have a, have a twelve percent death rate. Now this is where it gets really funny. If he doesn't score, they have a fifty. Three percent death rate, meaning in the original series, forty-three red shirts died depending on whether or not Kirk gets laid. Percent, forty-three percent of red shirts die, depending on whether Kirk gets laid. Yeah. Now this is really this is where it really gets funny. Famous playwright William Shakespeare kills the same amount of main characters in his plays. Tease all you want, but Kirk doing alien women saves the lives. CBS cares. Uh. I just thought that was a really, really funny little thing. <laughs> also, who has the time to figure that out? Star Trek nerds never underestimate Star Trek nerds. The only people that are worse than Star Trek nerds are Star Wars nerds. And I uh, consider myself one of each. <laughs> start trying to start another flame war, are we? Ah, uh, flame wars, that's what I do. First it was... Yeah, let's just leave it there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's not go there. Yep, leaving Indeed. that alone. Um, so, hmm. Yeah, you know what? I'm. <laughs> uh, somebody just threw you under the bus, Stuart. Uh oh. What'd she say? Oh, you'll have to check the chat. I'm gonna kill her. <laughs> Maybe it was maybe it was me that threw you under the bus. I'm still gonna kill her anyway. No. <laughs> uh, well, we did want her to run, but obviously she didn't listen. Uh. <laughs> I know that. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Jeez, and I was gonna take you off on Valentine's Day. Yeesh. <laughs> now no, at least now we stand. Yeah. Well. What? Wait, what? I just <laughs> learned something hilarious. And I should have really thought about this. What? Mad Max is a sci-fi film. Oh god, Mel, Mel Gibson. And it was made in Australia on Tell almost zero dollars. How did we not yeah. think of that before now? <laughs> I don't know. Mad because it's Mad Max? <laughs> Mad Max is awesome. Another exactly, but it's... Because it's Mel Gibson. Another movie which no one would expect to be on this list, because it was originally released, uh, it was made primarily by people from Germany, Iron Sky was ah. also <laughs> credited as being made in Australia, because some of the visual effects were done down here, which is uh, why which is why we actually get a named spaceship in that movie. We get Even it? if it is the Dundee, Dun it looks like a freaking beer can. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best part, though. That is the ultimate Australian in joke. <laughs> it's, we have a flying space, flying beer can in space. Is Dundee one? It, I don't think of a way for it to be possibly more Australian than that. But let's see. We've got fifty-four days, broken allegiance, crawl space, cross talk, dead city, dead end drive in, I Frankenstein. Really? Wait, I Frankenstein was Australia it was filmed here. It's, I am. It's credited as an Australian science fiction film. It sort of falls into the category. Of wow. Uh, well, guess that one. Jupiter Ascending, which I'm looking forward to. Mm, that, um, would be, that would be good. I have no idea how to say this, so I'm going to totally screw it up. Kalachi, K O L A C H I. Don't know what that is. No idea how to say it. So we got Mad Max, Mad Max Two, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, Mad Max Fury Road, Ma uh, and believe it or not, The Matrix Reloaded. We have to take credit for that pile. Yay! Um, that pile. I the, missed that one. The Matrix Reloaded. Uh... Yeah. Predestination. Yeah. <laughs> Sky Pirates, Son of Steel, Starship. Terran, The Time Guardian, Turkey Shoot, and Zone 39. Ah, Turkey Shoot! <laughs> so. <laughs> Turkey Shoot. 
Oh, I forgot about that one. Yeah. Oh, turkey shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we've got about five minutes or so left. A little bit under that. Um, this is why we leave the news to last. Yeah, because once, once we burn out of ideas, we're totally screwed. It's, yeah. It's a, and we really, really, really suck at sort of buffing this stuff out and making it take longer. So. <laughs> that we do. Yeah. Oops, that's not what I want. I want to get the other thing. Um, Actually, yep. Do you, mind, do you mind if I quickly, uh, I know it's a straight out of it, but do you mind if I quickly talk about Flash and Arrow uh, season returns? Yes, yes, yes. Um, for those who don't know, Flash and Arrow just just came back from hiatus. Yes. And came back from their mid-season break. Yeah. As well as quite a few other shows, there were heaps of them are yeah, back. Yeah, everything's that, coming back. It's that time of year. Um, so, for those who don't know, Stuart, where did Flash and Arrow leave off? Ah, so end of Arrow leave off uh, left uh, ended. Stuart English, yeah. good, yay! <laughs> and, and you wonder why they made me an admin. Yeah. <laughs> and Stuart just I had didn't... a David moment. Yeah, so they left <laughs> off Arrow. Uh, uh, Oliver Queen went to go fight. Uh, Raz Al Ghul. Gonna... Yeah, Raz or Rage, whoever you say it as. Yeah. Uh, Rage Al Ghul, uh, because he's taken the blame. For fear of killing off Sarah, the yeah. uh, old Black Canary. So they left off with that. Uh, they come back at, um, to uh, Star, uh, Star City, Starling City, or Star City. I don't know if they've changed. Starling it City. Still with Starling. Uh, to Ro- uh, to Roy Diggle and Felicity uh, taking care of things. Really funny moment in that Diggle and the Arrow outfit. Yeah, I haven't seen <laughs> that since him, season one. Just just him saying this is really tight. It's funny. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, then on to Flash. Flash uh, ended mid-season finale with uh, Professor Zoom or Reverse Flash, whatever you like to call him. Now, um, they come back, and uh, Captain Cold, or I'm going to call him the Prison Break duo, come back. Yeah, I know. As soon as I saw, it's like, oh my god, the brothers are back together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's even funny at the end of the episode. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> Captain Cold comes back with. Uh, a- what would you want to call him? Um, Heat Wave, I guess, is what his official nickname that they dubbed him as in the show. Sure, we'll go with that. I, I don't. He's effectively the opposite of Captain Cold. Captain Cold yeah, has a cold gun Fire that Storm, takes everything Fire to Storm. absolute yeah, zero. Fire and, yeah. Because Firestorm's already been done. established. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, they come back. Uh, once uh, Captain Cold comes back, wanting revenge for, uh, against Flash. Uh, Flash is uh, trying to get his speed up to flat uh, because he couldn't catch uh, uh, Professor Zoom. So, uh, he's just trying to get his speed and he's doing training. Oh, and he also told, and Barry also told Iris that he loves her. Yeah. That's a little awkward. Yeah, a but, little. Um, so basically, uh, they're trying to do, uh, they're trying to, um, flush out, um, Barry, but Barry's not having any of it. So instead, they go off to, um, Caitlin. Uh, she's one of the people, uh, who works at Central Labs, uh, who helps Barry with this stuff. And, uh, then they, uh, flush Barry out, uh, they fight. Uh, Barry defeats them, uh, and basically it ends with them in a prison truck. Uh, in a prison truck, getting broken out of. Yes, they're rehashing Prison, prison Break. Yeah. On the plus side, we finally have a backstory for Prison Break. <laughs> <laughs> Previously <laughs> on Prison Break. Prison Break. <laughs> um, I've got one for you guys. Yep. Uh, it is just recommenced. So for those of you who love a good sci-fi, love a good laugh, and don't care what you watch we have a new season of Top Gear and in the first episode someone gives Jeremy Clarkson a hovercraft oh god <laughs> uh, anyway we are now on the last minute the amount of fluff we put in there of us saying nothing seemed to have filled out the hour Woo! so away we go um, I am your host David make sure you check out Save Sci-Fi we've got Stuart on the news on there now such as facebook.com slash save sci-fi it's worth checking out um go to you guys you have 15 seconds bye see you guys have a good week yep uh, we'll see you guys next week and we'll work out what the hell the topic's gonna be keep an eye on the facebook page I'll put up details when I work them out because that's too much effort bye
Bye. Bye, have a great day. Grr, arg. Next. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next.